Hello. Um, what I want to do right now is to explain the operation of this electrostatic lifter. Uh, you can find the description of this and, and actually discussions about how it works in many places over the internet. Uh, and ma many of the discussions are wrong because uh, its operation is sufficiently obscure that uh, people sometimes attribute all sorts of strange things to what's going on. Um, they'll talk about uh, how the high voltages of the device uh, actually warp the space-time continuum and cause things to happen. It's nothing nearly so strange, although it would certainly be a lot of fun if that were true. This device has actually been around with us uh, for quite a number of years. I don't know who originally came up with the idea, but uh, it, it certainly wasn't me. But let me explain a little bit about how it works before I turn it on. That uh, if you can see, uh, they're very, very small, hair thin, actually, and they might even be smaller than a hair. There are small wires going across the top uh, of this balsa wood triangle. You can see the balsa wood sticks here and the, and the vertices, and then connecting these balsa wood sticks are these very, very fine wires. Now this whole setup right here is designed to take the uh, uh, the energy stored in this 12 volt battery moves over to this circuit and this circuit actually builds uh, builds this voltage up so that we actually get about 30,000 volts uh, on these uh, hair thin wires. There's not a lot of current um, but there's a, a lot of voltage and what happens is that extremely high voltage uh, uh, creates what is sometimes called a corona discharge. That the voltage is so high that it actually uh, rips electrons af off the molecules in the air. And uh, so we get ionized uh, charge here. And then you go down to these uh, uh, aluminum foil strips that go around the base of the balsa wood triangle. And these aluminum foil strips are, as I said, there's a 30,000 volt difference between the top here and, uh, and the aluminum foil strip. And then we have the copper plate on the bottom. This isn't absolutely necessary, but when we built, built this, we found it was important to sort of make it work, or, or if we were just had this, let's say, sitting on a floor, a rug on a floor, we could end up getting a static charge on here and it would create some problems. So we made it so we had this copper plate down here, sort of ground uh, everything that's happening. Now uh, what happens is the, uh, the uh, charged ions get accelerated down uh, off of the, uh, uh, the, the small thin wires. Uh, that they then collide with other non-ionized air molecules and they push those molecules and then down. Of course, the non-ionized air molecules continue to flow right through the center of the triangle here and as this thing is lifting this triangle up and, um, uh, uh, and they continue on to move down and hit the, the copper plate at the bottom and then, and then uh, disperse out. So we will have a situation where uh, particles here get ionized, okay? Uh, some of those particles move down, colliding with other air molecules, which then continue to pass through the center. Uh, some of the charged particles will go to the aluminum foil strips sort of completing the circuit, because the circuit has to be completed. Uh, and uh, what happens is, and we have a, a Newton action reaction kind of thing going is that as the charge comes off here colliding with the air pushing the air down the result is uh, the reaction force which actually will then lift this uh, triangle balsa wood frame up so it's a combination of a high voltage electrostatic effect with a Newton action reaction kind of affair that's going on that will end up lifting up this balsa wood frame uh, as uh, as evidence that that's what's happening. Uh, if you try to do this experiment in a vacuum, which people have tried to do, it, it, re it won't work. It, it won't lift up. So it actually requires the air in this whole process 
uh, in order for this uh, balsa wood lifter to lift up. So I have a switch over here, I'm going to turn it on. That'll, that'll uh, uh, connect the battery to the electrical circuit, uh, which hopefully then lifts up the balsa wood connector. Ah, there we go. Now, as, uh, as evidence that we have that 30,000 volt charge here, I'm going to shock myself. Uh, I'm going to do it with this pencil. Now, there's not enough voltage in this setup where it could actually hurt me, although you could build one of these things in a way that you would get hurt, depending on what you use as a power supply and so on. But I, I don't know if the camera will be able to pick this up or not, but you probably can't actually see these wires now because they're vibrating a lot. But I'm going to try to get this pencil close so I can feel the hair on my arm standing up. I, I can hear, I can hear the the, uh, the little electric car going. I can feel the air, hair on my arm standing up, but I can't see it. Let me try down here on this copper plate. Uh, standing up here on my arm, but I just can't see the the spark. Let me uh, see if I can show you the wind here. This isn't a great way to show it. I wonder if I, if I had a, uh, you can kind of sort of see, by holding this straight as I move it in, you can see that it bends down because it's the airflow that's pulling it down. Piece of paper towel. There you can see it as I move in, I'm holding it straight. It gets right under there. The air, you can feel it's a pretty significant breeze. You may have seen advertised on television uh, this air freshening device that they call the ionic breeze. And this is exactly the principle on which the ionic breeze works. You may have seen that, that, uh, that commercial for the ionic breeze and wondered how does that thing work because it supposedly creates a, a fresh breeze uh, without using fans, and this is exactly how it was designed to work. It works exactly like this electrostatic lifter. Let me turn it off. So this is a, this is a pretty pretty neat device here, um, and that uh, I have a circuit design that I picked out of a book that I have that I'll include in my write-up on this to show you how you can build this if you want to. It's not, uh, it's not terribly difficult to build. You just have to make sure to get, uh, get all the right parts. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, there are ways that you can build this uh, where you can very definitely uh, uh, hurt yourself if you weren't careful. Uh, and uh, for example, uh, I've seen some discussions where people talk about using the power supply uh, off of an old cathode ray tube, like an old tube TV. Uh, that that uh, could give you a very serious shock. And some others have talked about using a uh, uh, the power supply used uh, to to generate the spark used in a, uh, a car spark plug. Um, and using that could very definitely, using that coil to generate that voltage to give you a spark, that also could very definitely uh, hurt you. So going with uh, perhaps a little bit tamer design that's not intended to produce those levels of current that you find in a cathode ray tube or a car spark plug, like this design, is much safer. Believe me, that if you tried to, when it was turned on and operating, if you tried to touch it with your finger, uh, you'd know it. So, uh, you know, you have to exercise some care with this. Okay.